Yo, what's up, cool? How you doing, man? You can hear me okay, right? I think... Because I was... I was... I am eating um, an omelet right now. So I have two omelets, a bowl of oatmeal, two donuts, a mug of coffee, and a cup of orange juice. Yeah, it's a great breakfast. I feel like I feel like not a lot of people really like or appreciate oatmeal. And I really do. I love oatmeal. I've been a big oatmeal fan since I was a kid. Just really like it. Um, and there is nothing in the world like a good omelet. Peach oatmeal? That is pretty good. Like like peaches and cream. Get a little uh little milk, little uh little cinnamon in there. Yeah. Just like normal oatmeal with cinnamon. Mine today has um apples, cinnamon, and maple syrup in it. which is kind of a killer combo. It's very good. Sometimes take omelets over hamburgers. I get that. I love, love burgers. Morning, Ash. How's your day going so far? I've been up and working for about four hours now. Because I accidentally fell asleep instead of doing my night stream last night. So instead of being asleep right now, I'm awake and working <laughs> and really hungry. Got home late from your parents last night. Did you have a good time with your parents though? Yeah, definitely. Kind of like burning through this omelet right now. I've got I've got two omelets, a bowl of oatmeal, two donuts, a mug of coffee, and a cup of orange juice right now. And I'm flying through these omelets. Yeah, just I laid down for a nap last night. And um and what was supposed to be a two-hour nap, followed by me making dinner and hopping on stream, turned into sleeping for 10 hours straight. So not only did I miss stream, but I missed dinner. And now I'm real hungry. New stimulus bill starting to be talked about in the government. We might be getting some more free money soon. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I'm excited about everything about that except this notion that it's free money. We paid for that already, right? I know, I never sleep that long. I have such a hard time sleeping longer than like five, six hours at a time. 10 hours is bonkers for me. That's crazy. Uh, you had some good family time. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great breakfast. Yeah, just a, a pedantic thing that I have. Like, no, no, like we paid for that already. They're giving it back to us instead of blowing it on, like, the military or, um, you know, whatever other wasteful spending projects that they would have spent it on anyway. That's the other thing with, like, income tax returns, right? You're not getting money back from the government. You overpaid all year, and they're giving you 
back what they shouldn't have taken from you in the first place. So. Uh, taken out of, out of like, um, like income tax. Um, I haven't been following that stuff too closely. Um, mostly because they drag their feet and take forever and change their minds all the time anyway. So... I'm um, just kind of waiting until it's finalized to see what see what they got cooking. Even another like six to twelve hundred dollar check would help out like the vast majority of this country a lot. Like twelve hundred bucks covers my expenses for two months. If you're good with budgeting and uh, put yourself in a, a situation where you're like pretty much self-sufficient or, or have minimum expenses, $1,200 goes a long way. Mmm. Like they should have done last time. So like... Um, when I was in college, right? Because, like, college students didn't get anything last time around. So when I was in college, I was what um, they considered... Uh, what was the term for it? I'm blanking on the, the legal term for it. Um, basically means that I am not able to expect any financial support from my parents. I was... Um, Independence, not the right word. I'm blanking on I'm blanking on the legal term for it, but I had zero dependency um, held against me because of my parents. Um, so like, um, I didn't. I got. I received basically. I received extra student aid because I didn't have um, parental support. Okay, and so what that means is that for everything, I'm listed as financially independent, but the way the last stimulus bill works is, no, not emancipated, because I, was, I wasn't a minor, I was an adult. So in, in college, when it comes to like financial aid stuff and FAFSA reporting and, and, and all that stuff, you still are required to include your parents' income and stuff until you turn like 24, 25, something like that. Um, unless you have a specific condition or case in which you are estranged. That's the word. I was, I was, I was, um, I think, I think estranged is the term that they use. I was an estranged student. So I'm estranged from my family, from my parents specifically. Um, and as such can't expect any financial support from them. Um, and so because of that, um, it changed all of like my financial paperwork and stuff in college, but because of the way that the last stimulus bill worked, I would not have received any money from that stimulus. So like it's documented that I have no connection with my parents, but because I'm a college student or what was a college student under the age of 25, I would not have received any, any benefits from that stimulus package. So like, a lot of lot of people um, missed out last time around, or like, because it it didn't really affect like emancipated minors either, right? Like I don't think I don't think emancipated minors got anything from that last stimulus bill, and those are like the people who needed the most, right? I mean, can you imagine being seventeen years old? You lose your job, you have no years of savings backed up. If you get any money from the stimulus, it's going straight to a PC. You have nothing else to buy. I get that. I would recommend putting some of it into savings, right? Like if you don't have to buy or like don't have to spend it all on a PC, uh, put some in savings. So like step number one for financial independence is recognizing that any money you don't have to spend, you shouldn't spend. Especially when you're young. Like, any money that you can put away before you turn 18, you put away every penny you can. 
Um, so like, like when I was 18, all right, we're going to get into story time. Are we cool with story time? This is going to be a little heavy. Kind of like a content warning. I want to make sure, I want to make sure everyone's cool with, with a little bit of heavy story time, if that's okay. All right, I'm not hearing any objections. Okay, so um, basically when I was 18, my parents like threw me out um, violently and aggressively and like stole a bunch of my stuff, um, including my car. And so the only way that I was able to survive is because I had accumulated, uh, before I turned 18, roughly $2,000, $2,500 worth of savings. And if I had been smarter with my money, it probably could have been about three and a half, four thousand. Um, that's the only reason that I was able to survive. I was homeless for literally three weeks. Um, I was fortunate enough to be friends with um, the associate dean of the college that I went to, who arranged for housing for me uh, to get me off the streets and keep me in school. Um, but if it weren't for the savings that I had um, and my connection with the associate dean i probably would be dead right now i'm, I'm like i'm not joking I, I probably would be dead um and so you you really have like no idea what's going to happen to you um especially like when you're a teenager and you're not an adult yet and you're not out on your own yet save up every single penny that you can um no one five years from now is going to care what kind of sneakers you have. No one five years from now is going to care about what kind of t-shirt you wore to whatever concert. Okay. I'm not saying don't go to the concert. I'm just saying don't drop 150 bucks on a t-shirt to go to there. D does that make sense? You know, like still have fun. You can still have fun and, and spend money on like experiences and doing stuff. But like, um, yeah, absolutely. Like, like buy your, buy your t-shirts from fucking Walmart. Right. Buy your sneakers from goddamn Walmart. Even today, like, the reason I'm able to afford to, to stream full-time, even though I do not make nearly enough money to cover my expenses from it, um, is because I was able to save up six, seven months worth of expenses um, ahead of time before I, before I started doing this full-time, before COVID started. Um, and so, you know, that's how I do it. Like, I literally buy my T-shirts from... Walmart and occasionally Hot Topic or my online, my own online merch store, um, which any minimal profit margins from that go back to me anyway. Um, I buy $15, excuse me, I buy $15 sneakers from Walmart. They last me anywhere from six months to a year, depending on how much I'm on my feet and out and about. Um... Just like, I mean, little stuff like that. Literally just like cut your expenses as as tiny as you can all the time. Because you never know when you're going to need that extra money. Mom had a similar experience. She had enough money to go to the University of Utah for at least two years. I think she did. Mom spent it all somewhere. So instead of being able to go to one of the best medical colleges in the world, she had to go to a community college that did some shady stuff with student loans. Yeah, don't even get me started. So I, I went to... University of Wisconsin Extension Schools, and one of them um, misappropriated, because like I said, my, my financial aid situation was really different, and um, the financial aid office at um, University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire, that's where I went, the, the second school that I went to, their financial aid office was a total shit show, um, and they mishandled $18,000 worth of grants as loans. So now I have an extra almost $20,000 in loans that I have to pay off because they mis misappropriated my funds. So believe me, when, when you talk about shady, shady stuff with student loans, I get it. They, they grossly misappropriated nearly $20,000. And that was just me. That's not even counting my friends who had the same experience. Um, the difference is my best friend's mom um, was able to fight that. And I didn't have anyone who was, who was able to do that for me, being that I'm estranged from my parents. And that's how I get my extra money for school anyway. So, but, but yeah, I, I, I get you on, on the on the shady loan stuff. Uh, student loans in this country are um, criminal. And once we get this um, racial justice and um, COVID stuff sorted out, the next institution we need to come for is student lending.
Stevens Henniger. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this thing. I certainly spent enough money on their web design. But this this notion that it's only one or two colleges that do shady stuff with student lending is preposterous. Because um, like advising offices are um, instructed and designed um, to keep people in school as long as they can, as much as they can. Um, so like the reason I dropped out of college is because... Um, the university I was going to tried to make me go to school for seven years for a four and a half year degree um, by intentionally misleading me and setting me on the wrong path um, for course load and making me take classes saying that they were essential and they would, turned out didn't actually do anything for my major. Um, they tried to they try to make me go to school for seven years to get a four and a half year degree. I mean, this is a, a rampant problem um, across the entire American educa secondary educational system. Um, I'm, I'm Googling something right now. Um... I'm not looking for business trends. I'm looking for, I forget which lending um, institution it was, but it was um, one of the one of the lending institutions for student loans um, started in 2014 and became the number six grossing new company of the 2010s. I don't re I don't recall the name of it offhand. But it was a student lending company, and out of all companies started in the U.S. between 2010 and the end of 2019, they were the sixth highest grossing company. They weren't even around the first half of the decade. Sixth highest grossing company for the entire decade, and all they did was process student loans. Want to go to college for football and programming? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say you necessarily need to go to college for graphic design. Um, the odds... So the, here's the thing with like graphic design, right? It's like you can teach yourself and learn for yourself a lot of that stuff. Especially if you know like people who are already good at graphic design. The price of a graphic design degree does not make up for, like, it, it's going to cost you more for the degree than you're going to make as a result of getting the degree, if that makes sense. Programming, you probably want to go to college for. Graphic design, you probably don't need to. Like, if you want to learn graphic design, absolutely learn it. I just don't think you need a college education to do it. You've got teenagers out here making thousands of dollars a month off graphic design because they're just good at it. You know, they, they put in the time and the effort to learn it, and they're just good at it. That's just my two cents on that, though. It's okay. like kind of another thing we need to fix in this country. So like, I think education is important and I think everyone should probably go to college in some capacity, but not if the financial cost is going to place a burden on you to where you're probably not going to recover from it. And graphic design is one of those degrees. It just is. Programming. People always need good coders. And if that's something that you're 
you know, it's, it's something that's very hard to teach yourself. Um, I know I tried to teach myself a couple of different coding languages when I was in high school, and I had a very hard time with it. So, like, I know firsthand how hard that is to teach yourself. Um, but, yeah. Good GPA, too. Upcoming junior, have a 3.5. Made honor roll three times. Student of the month, world civilization. Uh, you want to do something with political science. Okay. That one probably benefits from college. I say probably. It definitely does. Um, this year taking a financial literacy college class and a political, si political science college class. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would recommend going to going to college for political science if, if that's something you want to do. Financial literacy is super important. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can learn financial literacy without college courses. But if you have the opportunity to take a college course in financial literacy as a junior in high school, absolutely do it absolutely do it as many college classes as you can take as much college credit as you can get in high school absolutely do it absolutely go for it You want a PC so you can get better at Photoshop? Absolutely. Definitely helps to have a have a good PC for that. You know, the one that can actually run Photoshop. So like right now, like obviously um, with the amount of money that I'm making from, from streaming and, and content creation and stuff not covering my bills, um, <laughs> I don't have like access to Photoshop. I can't afford that stuff. So I've been teaching myself photo editing on like other programs and stuff, and uh, it's a lot of fun. You have free Adobe programs till you graduate. Absolutely, do that now. Yeah, absolutely. Now is a hundred percent the time. Now is absolutely the time. If you can get Adobe programs for free, man. I'd go crazy over that. Is that like through school or something? Yeah, definitely. What is that like? Probably would have started out on like Windows Vista. Windows 7? Vista? Something like that. Won't even connect to Wi-Fi? So you have to tether your phone to the PC? Oof. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If you if you can get... Because that's, that's what it's got to be, though, right? Like, it has to... If you're spending, like, stimulus money on anything, it has to be, like business tool or something that like furthers your personal existence and, and personal betterment yeah vista stayed up all night upgrading into windows 7 yeah vista was terrible i remember i remember when vista came out um and my my friends were financially more well off than than I was, and and so they had Windows Vista on their on their laptops and stuff, and they're like, it's terrible, it's not worth it. Right, exactly. It's a great tool. It's a fantastic tool, because you can use it, you know, to learn stuff, to do business. Um, I mean, like, my uh, my best friend is a social media management consultant, um, and he is working right now with um, myself and another guy 
um, like his his main clients are um, Teespring stores. So he's working with me on my Teespring store so that so we can kind of like market that better and stuff. Um, you know, so like there's just like a myriad of different ways that you can use it for business purposes and to make more money and be, you know become financially independent. But also like you can play games on it, you can watch YouTube and, and you know all sorts of stuff. So yeah, PCs are great though. Definitely not telling you not to get a PC. Just saying anything you don't have to spend from that check, put it away in savings. What's up, Brad? How is your British afternoon treating you? It's what, like, uh, three, three, three in the afternoon, four in the afternoon. What time is it over there? Yeah, it's three. Okay. Uh, currently, you only have a Switch that you can play on. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, so Brad, in, in the United States, we have this thing called Daylight Savings Time. Um, so, the time difference um, between the UK and the US changes, depending on what time of the year it is. So, sometimes it's three hours, and sometimes it's four I'm sorry, sometimes it's uh, six hours and sometimes it's seven for me. So like right now, like during the summer, we move our clocks an hour ahead. And then when fall comes, we move them back an hour. No, I get you, cool. It's a busy... You do that too? Whack. It's a terrible idea. It's really gotta go. BST and what what does BST and GMT stand for? I'm curious. British summertime, Greenwich Mean Time. Oh, sure, okay. Yeah. I'm I'm familiar with GMT. I didn't realize BST was a thing though. Cause Greenwich Mean Time is just like, um, zero on the time zone clock, right? It's what um, all global time zones zero off of. Yeah, that's more or less why, why Americans have daylight savings, which is the same thing as British summertime, but we have five, six time zones in America. So... Yeah, because like... Back when your life was dependent on when the sun got up, it kind of made sense. Um, but now, like, with the way technology has evolved, we really just don't need it anymore. And it needs to go away. Yeah, because you're on the, um, the prime meridian, they call it. Imaginary line drawn right through the Greenwich Observatory. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about Arizona. I'm not counting Arizona. Because um, we have Eastern, Central, Mountain, Pacific, Alaska, and Hawaii time. And then if you want to count Arizona on its own, you can count Arizona too. <laughs> um, no, so it's really weird. So my, my dad used to live in... Um, place called Wickenburg, Arizona. Um, and so one of the things that Heidi and I like to watch um, when we get a, a few moments of uh, free time is we'll watch like ghost, like ghost hunting stuff, like ghost hunters. And uh, recently on one of those, they actually went to a haunted mine just outside of Wickenburg, Arizona. And I've actually been to that mine. I was there. I, I visited it when I was a little kid. And... Um, it was crazy because my fiance has explored more than I have. She's, she's like been more places and, and gone on more trips than I have. But for once there was a place that I've gone and she hasn't. I've ever watched vlog creations. Uh, no, I haven't. I don't believe so.
What was the show called, Brad? That sounds awesome. Mm. Yeah, I, I would love to know the name of that show. That sounds awesome. Um, perfect person to watch if you want to laugh. It was banned. Oh, sure, you can still find it on the internet somewhere though. It's called Ghost Watch. We're gonna Google. Oh, it's a movie. See, it's a British reality horror pseudo documentary television film. Um, first broadcast on BBC One Halloween night, nineteen ninety two. Written by Stephen Volk, directed by Leslie Manning. Okay. It's a horror mockumentary with a 7.6 on IMDb and a 4.2 out of 5 on Shudder. Early 90s mockumentary horror. That's really groundbreaking. People didn't do like a lot of mockumentary stuff back then. It's very like genre bending for its time. Who is in it? Hmm. I don't see any names that I recognize offhand, but again, it was like 30 years ago. What's up, Adam? Um, that kind of brings me to something. No, they. Some of them look look young enough. They they should still be alive. I mean, it was only it was 30 years ago. It wasn't like it was 50 years ago. Um, have PTSD from a time a car tire blew up while you were exiting a freeway going 60. So anytime a car starts to get bumpy, you get really bad anxiety. It's like the only time you get anxiety. Damn, bro. Um, I actually had a tire blow up. Um, it wasn't my car. It was, um, my friend's car. I went to, um, Green Bay Packers versus Detroit Lions at Lambeau Field last year. Um, which was heartbreaking and infuriating enough on its own. Um, cause that was one of the games that the, the refs had two terrible calls right at the end and straight up handed the game to the Packers. Um, it was very frustrating to, to watch the, the fake penalties got called right in front of me. I literally was looking right at them when they didn't happen. Anyway, we're on our way home. Um, and we're getting on the highway, leaving green Bay and the car starts like yoinking up and down, up and down. And, um, I tried to tell the driver to stop and he wouldn't stop. And then all of a sudden it goes kaboom. And, um, I'm kind of surprised he didn't crash us right into the guard guardrail. But yeah, I get that. I totally get that. Cause like that's scary shit, man. Yep. Hands to the face twice. Trey Flowers has never once committed hands to the face in his entire career, but he committed it twice in one drive without touching the guy's face mask. <sighs> Irritating as fuck. I literally was sitting on the yard marker where the first one happened. You're on the motorway, going down to the dual carriageway. It's like a train intersection. You're about to go through, but the gate closed and the engine stopped. whack it's messed up um I'm trying to think here oh i remember now so i'm gonna get you guys a link um while we were on the topic am i allowed to watch other people while i stream yeah um but i'm using Streamlabs right now so it's really tricky to pull up other people's streams with like how their input system works on Streamlabs. If I was using normal OBS, it wouldn't be an issue. Um, I've done that before. Like um, when Ash Lion and I play um, play Jackbox, I'll usually stream from normal OBS. Um, doesn't have like the cool banners and some of the other features and stuff, but it does let me pull up browsers and stuff. Um, so I'm pulling up something right now. I think you guys are going to like this. I've been waiting a while to announce this, but I think the time has come. I 
I think the time has come. So we're supposed to be recording our first episode tonight, but um, I've been talking about doing a podcast for a while now. And so this is the official Instagram page. My fiance and I are starting a podcast about um, paranormal stuff and unsolved crimes and stuff like that. So like all sorts of creepy stuff. It's called the Oh Heck No podcast. Um, that's the, the link in chat right now to the official Instagram page um, for the podcast. If you guys want to check it out, um, we're supposed to be recording our first episode tonight. Um, when like over the last week or so, I've been talking about like um, I have like research to do or I've been doing research. This is what I've been researching for uh, was for our first episode of our podcast. Um, so we're, we're going to be doing that, um, tonight we're going to be recording our first episode and then putting it out, um, probably within the next like week or so. We still got some stuff we got to sort out. I think we, um, are waiting to hear back on, um, a music producer for, um, some theme music. Um, but yeah, you don't know how to do it. Okay. So it should have directions on the box, Brad. Um, so what you do here, we're going to go, I'm going to pull up, pull up directions for you. Okay. Cause I, th I think you need, yeah. So you need, um, Oh, goodness, how how do leaders equate to quartz? They're pretty close, aren't they? Yeah, so you need about two liters of water and a cup of sugar for each packet of Kool-Aid. is more or less how, how you make it. Yeah. So you, so for each packet, you need two liters. No, one liter is one quart. Cool. You need two liters of water. Yeah. Those packets go a long way. They make a lot. So you need, you need, um, yeah. One, one quart or hang on one liter is 1.06 quarts. So they're, they're effectively the same. You could not fill a bath with two liters. It's two liters dog. You need like a, you need like a pitcher. You need like a, like a. I don't know what, yeah. Um, no, the, the really, well, so like, oh my goodness. Here. I'm gonna, I'm trying to do something right now. Okay. Let's see if we can add a source. We'll go media source. That's not what we want. Um, window, window capture. Um, And then we want this window. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to change this quick. Oh, I'm dumb. I didn't need to do this so much easier here. Okay. Cause what I'll do then 
is I'll just put it in Discord. Okay. All right, so I put it in Flex on us on Discord. Okay, so this is the size comparison between a one liter and a two liter, right? So this is like kind of like, I don't know, one of the bigger bottles you would like actually drink straight out of. And then a two liter is like the actual big bottles, if that makes sense. Does, does that make sense? Um, I do actually have half of a two liter right now. I could go and get that. Um, here, I'll be right back. Okay, so when I was having my cherry vodka Cokes yesterday, I was pouring it out of this bottle. So this is two liters. Um, putting it like next to my head, I guess, for size comparison. So this is just like, I don't know. It's a two liter bottle. This one time, the night before you were baptized, you woke up. What the fuck? Once we get a few normal, um, normal episodes put out, we probably will do like listener stories and stuff. Jubilee Line has 5G. I have to remember that when I'm in London. What? This, it's not that much. This is like what you would get for like a, a party in the US. Like if, if you wanted to like have some friends over, have a pizza or two, grab one of these things, everyone gets to have some. Logan Canyon Nunnery? Um, it's like a diabetes bottle. You know, there are people in the US who do drink those things straight. I, I kind of, I, I have an inclination to laugh, but like there are people in the US who drink that stuff straight. I, I used to be one of those people. I used to drink two liter bottles of Mountain Dew. It'd last me about like a day and a half to two days. Yeah, like... Like they said on Discord, it's it's the kind of bottle you'd, you'd put that like in the fridge and you'd drink that like over like three, four days. Ghost Adventures did a show in the nunnery. All right. Yeah, um, we have a pretty long list of stuff that we've been wanting to like cover for a while. Um, so like the first episode we're doing is on um, Salem, Massachusetts and Ghosts of Salem. Um, cause we've actually been there. We went to Salem, um, in May of 2019. So a little over a year ago. Um, and we actually saw and got pictures of a ghost, uh, while we were there. Saw some weird stuff there too. I wouldn't be surprised. Dude, there's got to be so much stuff in the UK that's just, like, haunted as fuck. You get people living in one place for that long? Yo, that's fucked up. Cool. Do you know what the um, what the Paulding light is? I get you, Adam. I get you. That was me four days ago. 
I believe that wholeheartedly, Brad. I mean, you got to think like the oldest stuff in America is 400 years old, right? Like the, the oldest settlements, like um, Salem was founded 400 years ago, like just barely 400 years ago. You work one more day and then you got your vacation. Yeah, see, like, um, your school's been around for 100 years longer than the oldest settlements in America have been. You know, it's so like, there's just no way that that stuff's not haunted. The Ben Lemon Hotel. I've actually heard of that one. Before tea! <laughs> ah! <laughs> we got a harbor in Boston to show you what, what we think of your tea, and your tea taxes, and your sugar laws. <laughs> so, okay, so like the Boston Tea Party, here's like an American, a little bit of American history. So like the Boston Tea Party, um, a lot of people like talk about that but they don't realize that the tea act was only one of like four acts that uh that made people really pissed off and the other <clears throat> the two other main ones were um the stamp act and the sugar act see if you can find the photos of the times um you have an extra shadow that was taller than you F fuck that Yeah, that's the cool thing about that subject matter, though, is we just have so much stuff to go off of. Like, there's so many things to talk about. You never run out. You have to, you have a video of how to make a cup of tea? Do you really think that Americans only drink iced tea, Brad? Americans love their hot tea. There's there's actually, like, a sizable portion of the of the American population that really enjoys hot tea. And, uh, <laughs> you can be upset all you want and claim ownership all you want, but ain't going to change the fact that we like it too. <laughs> not treason anymore. It's not. No, I actually, I love coffee very, very deeply. But if I'm looking for, like, relaxation, I'm going tea all the way. What do you have against coffee? As though tea doesn't make your breath stink? Yeah, tea is great. Like, I promise, when I'm able to settle down a little bit and not have to go 100 miles an hour all the time on streaming stuff, um, I'm going to get back into, um, a cup of tea and a nice book, uh, before I go to sleep. I'm actually, I'm in the process of reading a book right now. Um, and we thought it was kind of fun because, um, when we decided to do this podcast, I was actually in the middle of reading, uh, it's the house of the seven gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne. We actually purchased this book at the house of the, the Salem, or excuse me, the house of the seven gables or the Turner Ing Ingersoll mansion in Salem, Massachusetts, when we were there. I'm with you 100% there, Ash. Coffee runs through my veins, but tea is what gives me life.
There's a lot of things you'd physically die if they went through your veins. This doesn't stop people from injecting them. Yeah, good coffee doesn't need sugar. I drink my coffee black because I make good coffee. Now, if you're drinking cheap shit coffee, yeah, you're going to want some sugar in that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't say anything about that now. I didn't, I didn't say anything about that. Yes, injected one marijuana into my bloodstream. Can we actually delete the, uh, the illicit comment? Rocker, can you, can you hit that, uh, hit the delete on, on the one that could get me, um, community strike? Your mom opened mail? What? What? Oh, because she opened mail that was addressed to you. I understand now. Took me a second. I get you, though. I get you. I just don't, don't want any community strikes. Any, um... Any conversation about that kind of stuff can go in Discord. You can talk about that all you want in Discord. No, I, I know it is. I know it is. In, in the United States, it's a felony to open someone else's mail without their permission. But like I was saying about books, um, this is what I'm reading right now. Um, it was written uh, by Nathaniel Hawthorne, who is from Salem, um, and his grandfather, great-grandfather, I have it in my notes somewhere, um, was actually one of the judges during the witch trials. Uh, it was uh, Judge Hawthorne. Um, and the reason Nathaniel Hawthorne changed his name is because he didn't want to be associated with, with the witch trials. Magna Carta's copywritten? How? The thing was written in 1215. Literally is 800 years old. How does that have a copyright on it? I think you'll be surprised how crazy a lot of places are cool. Like, a lot of places are, are that messed up and have a lot of really, really dark shit in them. When I was in Boston last year, I went to a graveyard that um, served as one of H.P. Lovecraft's... Um, oh, it's got, like, the... Gotcha. Because it's a royal document. Wow, Brad. That's messed up, dog. Don't come for me on my six. <laughs> oh. It runs. You think Utah is the only place that did horrible things to the American Indians? I got some news for you, dude. <laughs> I got some serious news for you. <laughs> uh, Brad, no. No, you didn't. 
The Spanish, you can argue. Um, you're an eighth. Sure. I'm also an eighth. Right? Is that how that works? Is that how the math checks out? No. I'm a qu quarter? It's on separate sides of the family. I have one great-grandparent on each side of the family. We actually usually refer to ourselves as American Indian spread. If you try to talk to, or, or sometimes just native... Because um, Native American literally just means born in America. It's like... The fuck is that supposed to mean? So no, like, as a rule... I mean, not like we're offended by, by the term Native American, but like, it's not like... Typically what we would refer to ourselves as. You don't want to come to the U.S. You've legit sent so many death threats to Trump. Bro! Yeah, but a lot of us are trying to change that. Cool. Like, and just Indian is a lot different from American Indian. So, like, um, like, when we, when we study or, like, talk about, um, like, Native art or Native literature, it's American Indian art, American Indian literature. Like, I, I have, uh, one of my contacts at my old un university, um, I wouldn't say that, it's just, uh, the media talks about the wrong stuff with him. He's done a lot of really bad, really stupid shit, and the media just, like, hasn't talked about it. They get hung up on the dumb shit that he says and does versus the things that he's doing that have actually harmed our country. Um... But I don't want to hear any, like, threats of violence or talks of, talking about, like, violent, violent stuff in my chat, please. We don't, we don't, we don't do that here. We don't talk about it. No matter how grumpy or hateful we are towards people, um, that lives other places, not here. Well, that's just, what I'm trying to say, though, Rocker, is they're, like, not even focused on the actual negative stuff. They're taught, they focus on all the dumb shit. Like... Like, they freak out about every stupid thing that comes out of his mouth, but, like, why don't we, why don't we actually focus on the bad stuff or, like, the government overreach stuff he's doing? Um, yeah, I would say, let's, yeah, all, the last four presidents have been terrible. I wouldn't even call Reagan a good president. Obama, I wouldn't say was terrible. Obama was ineffective. He had some good ideas that were poorly executed and he wasn't willing to compromise enough to make them actually happen. Um, so he was more just ineffective than terrible. Um, Reagan did a lot of terrible things to our country. Bush Sr. was okay. Bush Sr. was okay. Um, Reagan, Reagan is not the person people think he is. He, he was not the president people, people think he is. Or was, rather.
He, he allowed a lot of really, really messed up stuff to happen under his watch. And is directly responsible for a lot of other things that have directly contributed to where we are as a country right now. In in bad ways, not the good ways people want to talk about. So don't 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 put Reagan on some sort of pedestal. The war on drugs. The amount of money that's wasted and the number of lives that's ruined for no reason. Except he wasn't a guns blazing president. What are you talking about? Pretty much the only good thing Reagan did was come to the table with Russia and get him to not nuke us. Nukes are... I would I would prefer to steer this this conversation away from politics. So I try to keep politics out of the out of the breakfast table. Like if I want to talk politics, I'll have a dedicated politics stream, which I've done in the past. a lot of nukes but yeah let's take nukes and politics to the discord if you guys want to talk about it somewhere but um, being proud of nukes and excited about the prospect of nuking people is not something anyone should ever do you should never ever be excited or, or happy about that prospect I'm actually gonna we're gonna I'm gonna pull something up for you guys. We're gonna put this in, in Discord. Okay. Alright, I'm putting something in Discord right now. Uh, I'm putting it under random chat, okay? If you guys want to talk about this stuff, talk about it there. But I just put a link in um, random chat to a video describing what it's like to survive a, a nuclear detonation. Um, please bear that in mind if you're going to be talking about that kind of stuff. Yeah, whether or not Kim Jong-un is alive or not is, is, I don't know, that's kind of like a, there's a lot of speculation on that. No, I'm just saying, because Brad was talking about that, and I, I strongly recommend that everyone here um, take a look at that. Because um, anytime, anytime you talk about, like, and I know I, I joke about nukes when I'm playing Civ Six. That's a strategy game. It's not real, right? When it comes to, like, real-world stuff... Um, yeah. No, you, uh... You don't fuck around with that stuff. But we've been live for an hour now. Um, all I got left is a little bit of coffee. So I'm going to finish my coffee. We're going to cut stream. And um, cut.
kind of go from there. Yep, finished off my OJ, finished off my omelets, finished off my oatmeal, finished off my donuts. Just got a little bit of coffee left. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we call orange juice a lot of the time here in the States. It's just OJ. Chill, cool, jeez. Um, so when I get off stream here, this is kind of my plan for the day. So I'm going to get off stream. Um, I'm going to do some dishes. I got dishes that need doing. Uh, I'm probably going to run to the corner store and pick up some groceries that, um, my fiance doesn't feel like picking up on the way home from work. And then I've got a little bit of stuff in my office I need to clean up. My office is kind of messy right now. And then I'm probably going to hop back on stream and we'll play some games. We'll do like an actual like gaming stream. How's that sound? You guys like that idea? I do not have a big American house. I live in a two bedroom apartment. Kind of like a flat. It's a, it's a nice apartment. Um, my fiance and I are not buying a house until we move away from where we live right now. Cause we kind of hate it here. Yeah. I definitely don't live in a luxury apartment. It's not, it's not luxury. It's nice. Don't get me wrong. It's nice, but it's not a luxury apartment. It's just not crappy. <laughs> um, it is nice though. I do like living here. This town's been shit for a long time and I'm ready to leave. I've been ready to leave pretty much since the moment I moved here. But, uh, life had other plans. Do we have what now? m &S? What is that? Fuck Utah. You could not pay me enough mo money to l live in Utah. You would have to pay me, like, literally ten grand a month to live in Utah. I'm, I'm not shitting you. You would have to pay me 10... Because it's a shit stain. It's a... Uh, it's a theocracy. Uh, a theocratic republic dressed up as a, an American state. Um, their liquor laws are oppressive. Their syntax laws are oppressive. Every fucking thing about that place is a shit stain. Do I look like I care if it's safe? I don't pick places for being safe. Well, that's just US liquor laws, which are also oppressive. Yeah, you would you could not pay me to to live under some sort of theocratic totalitarianism like like you have in Utah. Couldn't do it. And also the state's just a wasteland. I'm not trying to be rude. Um I genuinely have a, a, a 
z below zero opinion of uh, of Utah. It's just a bad place to live. And I have a lot of friends who live there. And horror stories from every single one of them. Never heard of Utah? You're not missing out. Best thing they got there is a giant lake made of salt. Hi, Foxy! <laughs> Speaking of people from Utah, how are you? That doesn't matter to me. There's so much more that matters about where you live than financial opportunity. Yeah, I'm fucking busted. I was supposed to um, play games with Foxy and Vortex last night, and I didn't play games with either of them because I fell asleep. Yeah, I, I know some great Mormons. Don't get me wrong. I have uh, one of my mentors in high school um, is Mormon, and probably the person in my life over the course of my entire life that I respect more than anyone. Like, if I had to pick one person who I respect most out of the entire scope of my life's existence, it would be this dude who happens to be Mormon. And, uh... It's like, please don't, please don't take that as me, like... committing hate speech against Mormons. I have I have no problem with Mormonism. I just refuse to be subjected to someone else's religious beliefs as a governing factor in my life. That's that's all. Well, shit, Foxy. I don't know what I'm supposed to say about that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everyone needs to be able to judge for themselves and live for themselves, and Utah legally does not permit you to do that. So. You would never catch me living there. That's all I have to say about that, though. Don't understand the language of these Americans. Um, it is. Utah, Utah is effectively a religious dictatorship. A visit? I could I could handle visiting for a week. There's some stuff in Utah I'd like to see. I'd like to see the Great Salt Lake. Um, Dinosaur National Monument is partially in Utah. Um, it's a redneck cult. That's more Alabama. Yeah, there, like I said, there's some stuff I'd like to see there, but you'd never catch me living there. You'd never catch me living in Utah. You'd literally have to pay me $10,000 a month to live there. And even that would, might be pushing it. I guarantee you I would crack and leave. Even if you paid me that much. Um... All right, well, that is uh, the last of my coffee. <laughs> more or less, more or less, Brad, more or less. Um, so that's the last of my coffee. Um, we're going to raid this dude, Eddie. He's playing Apex Legends right now. Um, normally he plays a lot of Madden, but Madden's kind of like dead this time of year. And... Uh, So I, I get, I get that he's not playing it, on account of that reason. So, um, we're gonna raid, we're gonna raid, raid Eddie. So if you guys could do me a huge solid and say hi to Eddie, uh, let's see, let's see at least six people ready to raid Eddie. I'm seeing five right now. Can we see at least six? Let me get six people ready to raid. All right, fuck it. Five's good enough. 
Um, but yeah, I'm going to, like I said, I kind of went over my plan for the day, so I'm going to get started on that. And then I'll be back in probably, we're aiming for two hours. I'm aiming for noon central time uh, for me to be back, and we'll play some games and stuff. Um, but I will see you later. Peace.